now another interesting concept i'll tell you say this is your uh, main program okay now from main program you called one function let's call this as f1 okay now f1 internally call and call at say line number 5 at line number 5 it called f2 okay then f2 internally at line number say 10 say it called another function f3 now f3 in say line number 10 called an another function called f4 now f4 can uh, call an another function called f5 now question to all of you so how long this can go how deep it can go any guess so there is no restriction so you are only restricted by the memory so there is something called stack memory when your program loads in the ram ram right i'll write it here so let's say your program is lo getting loaded in ram okay your program is loaded in ram so let's say this is your ram right, right? 8 gb 16 gb ram now in that your program got loaded here right so in this program when it is loaded the memory is divided into heap segment code segment data segment and stack segment so there is something called stack memory i will cover this as a separate topic later but just to understand in this stack memory if you have lot of functions your uh, your cpu you know it also has to remember what and all work it has done till here so it need to remember what and all the work was done till here okay so that when this f2 comes back right it should continue the work from there it means it has to remember what were the values at that time what was the information that time so where it will remember so what it does is it uses stack here okay so this is a stack stack memory so in the stack memory it will say f1 when f2 was called this is where i was i have was doing all of this thing this were my values so here f1 along with all those values it will store here okay then you went to f2 in f2 also you ran some code and then finally at the line number 10 you called f3 so again in stack it will put now f2 and all the values at that time then it goes to f3 then you put f3 here and all those values then f4 then finally f5 and its values okay now f5 is run once f5 is done the control comes back where control will come back from wherever it left if it had left there at line number 5 the controls come back to line number 5 then again control come back to line number 10 in f3 control come back to line number 10 in f2 control come back to line number 5 in f1 so that's how it control will come back and when it comes back these it knows all those values right before going there so it will again start from there only so this nesting in my career i have seen like this you know deeper the the calls that were made deeper in this function i have seen more than 25 calls 25 even sometime uh, 30 calls i would have seen so it means that function calling each other each other like that it had gone even 25 times deep that is possible in a bigger and a complex software okay because see we consume some libraries right so from our code we will call that library in a fourth or fifth function but then within the library to do the work it may have say <laughs> 10 <ten>, 15 calls <laughs> is this clear this function you know the function what happens when you call how it adds it to the stack memory and remember it and then how the control comes back there right is this concept clear and you can have these functions yes, calling each other now there could be also another way okay which is say you have one function let's say you have one function now this one function could be calling multiple functions it is not that it is only one to one so this is say f2 this is f3 this is f4 so all that f1 is doing it is first call f2 then it will call f3 then it is i mean it will have some code here of its own but then it called these functions so there is no restriction how many function this guy can call this guy now what happens you f1 called f2 okay and then f2 again called back f1 so what is this called so this guy said okay do this work for me and that guy said no do this work for me so what will happen 
imagine you asked your friend to do your homework then your friend will give that their homework to you again then you again give it back to the, your friend your friend is giving back to you so you do that uh, you do it you do it right what is this called recursion very good very good who was that hema hema thank you hema this is recursion so in recursion what happens you are not getting out it all you are just you know arguing who will do it <laughs> right so there has a recursion is a one of the beautiful concepts of computer science we'll learn that as a separate session but this is what happens it causes the recursion right now this is possible now what is the other pattern that is possible say you have multiple functions right f1 f2 f3 now all of them can call a another function called f5 this is also possible correct they can call f5 right then f5 can call f5 can call f6 this is possible now what happens is there is something concept called libraries okay libraries or standard libraries standard libraries or packages okay have you heard this word called uh, open source what is open source what is open source so in internet there are some repositories where the source code is uploaded that people can reuse them okay let's say you want to build something that others can reuse okay reusability reusability means you wrote the code that you want to give it for free to the people okay so they put it on internet in some repos i'll have a one separate uh, chapter on this one we'll cover it in depth now how you want to give the code is generally you give it either as a library or a package library or a package okay so what it will have it will it will basically organize that code into multiple files okay it will have code into multiple file and within this file they will generally say if it is object oriented it will have classes okay it will have class and within that class it will have functions it will have f1 f2 here then this guy will have another function with name f i mean i'm just using f1 ft through save time right so when you are building reusable things and giving software to other people you basically are giving them functions only so why python became so famous python has become so famous because lot of people in the world they have written these re reusable reusable libraries and packages of python inside that they have written the these reusable functions and they have put it on internet so say you want to open an excel sheet and calculate the sum of numbers you want to open an excel sheet and do uh, average and mean and median or you want to use some data and build an machine learning or ai model right ai uh, model or you want to download the information from internet and then insert into database to do all these things the code is already written and it is available for free on internet you all have to just take that code and then assemble it that's it you should know how to take and assemble it how to call these functions is what you should know it and your first project is going to be that so we are going to download a package from internet from uh, facebook and that library has functions to send messages to people on whatsapp okay and you have, will learn how to take that code put it in your project and how to invoke it right so people share this code among themselves through functions only like say i put uh, three of you on that project okay let's say you are on the three of you are on the project mm -hmm. let's imagine that total lines of code will be around 3000 lines okay each of you will write 1k 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 i'm just hypothetically saying so will we create just one single file in this you all three are trying to edit this line like say 1k here 1k here will we do like this no right this won't work so what we do we divide this separate into, file ha huh, complete like we divide into multiple files okay we divide this into multiple files and functionalities so the first file is to say download the data download data second file is uh, initialize api init api data the third is database file 
database operations the fourth is logging right fifth is authentication then the driver code driver or the ex main engine code right like is the engine now each one of you will go ahead and implement some functions inside this you will write this function you write this function somebody will write this function right so you write these functions and then your engine is calling okay it is calling this file and then inside that is calling this function it's calling this file and calling this function it's calling this and this right so your engine is doing using all these things so there is a technique called divide and conquer have you heard of this divide yes, and sir. conquer so in software yes. software project what happens you have big problem that get broken into different module and file and then functions and then your team your senior leader or principal engineer will say okay you hema you write this file and you write these functions and they'll say mallama you write this file and these functions so they divide a work like that and you work so technically speaking in your projects in junior level they will tell you functions to write only i mean initially you start fixing bugs first you fix bugs and issues and then you start writing functions so you have to understand that the code in the company get organized into so this is the hi hierarchy okay so packages packages modules modules or libraries okay they have different name libraries this is the first level so inside this you will have files inside files you will have classes inside classes you will have functions right within functions you will have the blocks like if else block for loop block right so blocks functions classes files and packages so this, this is how you hierarchically organize it so is this clear now why functions exist what are the pros and cons what are the body of the function i think we covered everything 